the temperature got to 21 Celsius. Oh my God. When you take pronunciation out of the equation, however, the problem there is we are cannot still even a say lot he's of wrong. names that sound like somebody might be having you. New invention. From fatty head Pretty to me. scratchy <laughs> bottom. Hello guys, welcome to our channel. Today we are going to watch top 10 things in British culture impossible to explain to non-Brits. So who better than Indians to tell that what that they cannot explain because they have been colonizers of us for so many years, 100, 200 years. So I think so we might have some of the British culture and we might be able to explain these things that that are impossible for non-Brits. I think so for Americans and for Europeans, other Europeans. But we, I think so, would be able to understand. Definitely. And I'm also thinking that we could connect with this video. Huh, so let's watch this video. I love to laugh. Toast, I've been meaning to talk to you. You're talking to me now? Yes. It's about the sense of humour issue. I have a terrific sense of humour. It's just very dry. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo UK. It's not quite nasal enough the way you're doing it, all right? You're not doing it the way he speaks. You're not doing it with the kind of... And you don't do the broken voice, but it gets very emotional. Number 10, Marmite. Marmite? What? It's a food item. Mar Yeast Mar extract. Mar Dark brown savoury spread. Invented in the late 19th century and made from yeast extract sludge left over from brewing beer. Sounds yummy. Well, actually, it, it doesn't. It but doesn't. Marmite fans know the very real joy it can bring when spread thinly on it's hot like buttered toast from with a jam. fresh brewed cup of tea to balance out the salty flavour. It doesn't oh. take long before new recruit Callum Howe finds another jar in a shocking state. Oh no. It's um, Baby one. Okay, don't panic. It's not, a not all Brits feel the same though, and Marmite is famously marketed as a polarizing food that you either love or hate. Oh. The proper stuff is only manufactured in the UK in the Burton on Trent Marmite factory. It's been there since 1902 and produces roughly 50 million jars in a year. So people and love in it. Australia, yeah, Vegemite is not as good. Oh, Number nine. Public schools are private schools. Huh? How is this possible? Public schools are public schools run by government. Yeah. They are not private. Hear it said that our country is run by public school boys. Yeah. However, this doesn't mean what it might in other parts of the world. Huh. It doesn't imply that these politicians went to state-funded institutions and pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. Some do actually call themselves private schools. And most call themselves charities too. Oh my god, Registered the confusion! Charities. Confused yet? Yes. No more than you should be. Why? Number eight. Insults are our love language. Ah, uh, high yes. five! of affection and endearment are different That's the world over. Thing. In the UK, you know that someone feels comfortable around you if they insult you to your face. <laughs> or they might just be rude. They're not jokes as such. They're just little things to say. Yeah, it's probably fine in the hands of taxi drivers or Cockneys, or even Geordies. When you've lived here long enough, you'll learn to tell the difference. Sarcasm may be the lowest form of wit, but it's also a great tool for masking social awkwardness. <laughs> it stops conversations becoming too serious, and fends off the Brit's greatest fear, earnestness. We spend so much time being generally polite, no one wants to put that wall up around their own friends and family. Yeah. Oh, you are, you're a big bag of shit! <laughs> it doesn't mean we love each other any less, but where's the fun in life without some friendly teasing? Yes, I agree to that. I love it. Of course. Number seven. Town names and their pronunciation. Huh? British place names are famously difficult for tourists to get their head around. Even native-born Brits will get tripped Which up at will? some point. <laughs> the English language has a checkered history. You can blame most of the confusion Black. on the Romans, <laughs> Anglo-Saxons and the Vikings. Also the French and the Celts. Being able to pronounce the name of Welsh village Clan Gringeth and has even become something of a party piece. Stuck the road from Clan Vipush Gringeth Gurgeth Quindroboth and Tisilio Gogogoch, the temperature got to 21 Celsius. When you take pronunciation out of the equation, however, the we cannot even say he's wrong. names that sound like somebody might be having you new invention from fatty hair to scratchy bottom. There are oddly named towns in every corner of the British. <laughs> Number six, the variety of accents. Accent. It gets loudly, it gets very loud indeed. It gets very specific. It's not quite nasal enough the way you're doing it, all right? You're not doing Name it up. the way he speaks. Every country has its own differences in dialect and accent, like even if it's difficult for an outsider to hear the nuance. 
But for such a small place, the UK does seem to have a disproportionate amount of variety. And that is for a, a big long thing. time, a British accent was generally thought of as standard received pronunciation. Huh. But with the world opening up, regional accents are gradually becoming more familiar to foreign ears. What I'm saying is that, like, they had to sell proper jobs, you know, for a the until then they weren't dead. You know, a lot of them was from broken homes. Oh, sorry, that was just a noise. A yeah, that's actually noise. Very yeah. different no meaning. From a Newcastle accent which is different from a Birmingham accent. Oh. You're a good man. A good man. A good soldier. soldier. People in the countryside don't sound the same as those in the town. Some people in Wales and Scotland even speak a whole different language. And nobody speaks like Dick Van Dyke. Bless him. All right, I'll do it myself. Number five, I'll do it hot and cold taps. Oh! There are a few questions oh. that non-natives tend to have about British bathrooms. The no plugs thing is clearly a health and safety issue. Okay. The carpets are about keeping warm, hmm. but separate taps for hot and cold, they're a bit more difficult to justify. Yeah, we because have we have one tap only. They're just not really relevant anymore. Historically, cold water came from the mains and was safe to drink. I'm quite all right, Barbara. I ran it under a cold tap. Hot water was a summer, later summer, addition to UK hot, Cold houses. water is hot water. When it did arrive, no. it was usually heated in a tank in the loft. Therefore, it wasn't as fresh. Modern bathrooms do sometimes have mixer taps. They've just not really caught on yet. Ah, oh, number four. They still have that the different tea tap session. The yes, tea. I Britain am is that not person. the only country to enjoy Me. a nice cup of tea. India. Oh, no. Yes. Chai. I can't remember the last time. I had a good cup of chai. But we are quite ta, singular ta. in the way we take it. It's possibly only the Irish who also understand this one. Mm. For the real tea drinker, you must understand this is not just a casual beverage. It is usually an addiction, begun in late childhood. Yes. Yes. A cup of tea can be a consolation, an offer of friendship, one or a gauge him. of how long a visitor is going to stay. When a British person says tea, they do not mean chamomile or green huh. or iced. They mean English breakfast, usually oh, yeah. with milk and often yes. with sugar. Chai. And yes. please, don't leave the tea bag in the cup. Tea <laughs> are great, huh? Number three, metric or imperial? Metric. The UK officially adopted the metric system in 1965. That's over 50 years ago. Hmm. It's what they use in Europe. It's what we learn in school. It's a Same much in simpler India. way of working things out as you're working with units of 10, not hmm. 12. So why do we still weigh ourselves in pounds and stone? Yeah, Measure why? Measure height in feet and inches. Travel in miles. Buy beer and milk in pints. The older generation will occasionally still tell you the temperature in Fahrenheit. Huh. Shouldn't we have acclimatised by now? Mm. No one under the age of 70 grew up under the imperial system. Good luck explaining this to anyone outside Britain because it makes no sense at all. No sense. Mm. Number two, baked beans. Oh, bland oh. food. Food has never had a great reputation with the rest of the world. Yes. We yeah. traditionally choose hearty, comforting food and that's okay. We need it in our climate. However, if there's one British dish that visitors really can't fathom, it's the humble beans on Yes, toast. I don't... Baked beans Feel are like a eating it for mm. the average Brit. I don't know why. Usually eaten as part oh. of a fried breakfast or as a quick snacky tea. Sometimes they're just what you need. In that animation, it looks good. Elsewhere in the world, no. but you'd be more likely to find them at a barbecue than on a breakfast table. No one else has taken this simple convenience food to their hearts quite like us. Hmm. Number one, what is the country? Ah, country UK, called? Britain, yeah. England, the Kingdom, Great Britain, the British Isles. Yeah. So which is it? Well, the British Isles is a geographical term. It describes a group of islands including Great Britain, the island of Ireland, the Isle of Man, the Scottish Isles, and the Seely Isles. Okay. Great Britain is the biggest island in the group and is made up of England, Scotland, and Wales. Okay. The United Kingdom is a political union. Full name, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. It includes England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Okay. The red, white, and blue flag is the Union flag or Union Jack, and is composed of flags from England, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. My God. Not Wales. Oh. It? Use one name. Agree with all yeah. UK is so confusing at some point. Like, this point was the confusing part. Like, UK, Great Britain, 
uh, like Britain Isles this and that there are so many names and you know I also don't remember like which mm. name is what and like I just say that this is England Scotland yeah. Ireland you even just mix I and match have, even I have googled it and I always you know end up thinking that what should I name it like UK or people will think I'm dumb as like yeah. I don't know how to pronounce or how to you know define the country mm. and they won't be wrong but the, mm. and they will be thinking that and also the thing is like if you talk about public schools yeah. <laughs> so the thing is like this is what we call like English uh, insults so like we yeah. are also very good with each other so that is how we can we are insult very comfortable other. with each other ha, so that is a, that is like how we are relatable yeah. so there are 10 things uh, one thing is something that we can relate to it is not no the second that chai thing also ha, I can she can read I can not total addiction because she doesn't you like coffee right no I don't he doesn't like any caffeine but I love chai I am a whole chai person yes <laughs> and the thing is like the public school thing that were very strange because normally like I have seen some British uh, people also talking about like oh I went to public school I always used to think that they went to government schools mm. because public schools mean that and private schools mm. are and you al- always think that private school people are like rich and this and that mm. but here it is completely different public school means rich people going that to was, private that school that is still even though he explained it That's still true. I am in confusion that ah. why, do, why do they call themselves as like we are private schools and then then some public schools can call them private and this and that so yeah, there was still confusion. very confusion <laughs> so what do you guys think about it do let us know in the comment section below so do like share and subscribe bye, bye.